Hi, I'm Crystal Hart and welcome to the Crystal Hart Show. Today with us is Michael Colavito and he is a fine art artist original. Thank you, Michael. Thanks so first off, you know, uh, your work is always pure, original. Could you uh, tell us basically what differentiates you from other artists and a little bit about your photography? I've had a, a lifelong pursuit of creating film photography. I don't use any digital manipulations, any kind of retouching. So everything I do is through a variety of categories. I specialize in color and shape. I do architectural fragmentations. I do cubist illusionism. I mean, human form is a big part of the work I do. And, you know, lately, architectural fragmentations has been something I've really been focusing on. But I shoot with an 8x10 view camera. So the size of my film is 8x10 inches. And on the ground glass, I can compose and build my images in a way that would be otherwise impossible. So for much of my work, I follow the guidelines of something called Calavito 21 Fundamental Principles of Pure Photography. And what it's about is not using any kind of trickery, any kind of photo assemblage, any kind of dark room techniques, because I actually don't go into the dark room. Everything I do is on one piece of chrome film, positive film, where you see the image. And basically when I shoot, what you see is what you get. If I do 10 exposures on a piece of film, that's what you'll see. That's my end composition. So I'm different than most other photographers in that even the masters of photography, not to say that they're not profound and, and truly remarkable and great and part of history and should be, but what I do differs from what they do. Pure photography is something that the main masters of photography built in over a century. And I'm talking about Alfred Stieglitz and Paul Weston and Ed Steichen and Gordon Parks and Man Ray and a whole slew of them, Ed Weston, Imogen Cunningham. So many people have contributed in great ways. And what differentiates me and separates me from them is that, again, I don't do optical assemblage. I don't go into the dark room to make my images. I shoot on film, and, you know, that is my final composition. Recently, or I shouldn't say recently, maybe three or four years ago, I wrote a letter to Thomas P. Campbell at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I spoke about this subject. I said clearly that he had just finished writing a foreword for a book called faking it, manipulated photography before Photoshop. And in his foreword, and Mia Feynman, who wrote the book, emphasized that the masters, because they went into the dark room, were in a sense doing what Adobe Photoshop does. And I had to separate myself from them. And fortunately, I got a good response from him in you know, basically confirming and acknowledging that what I do is unique and truly original to the art form. Well, you know, we've had this big COVID crisis. Sure. And so how has this, I mean, it's sort of devastated the art industry, I yeah. feel. And, and what are your thoughts on it? And, and then I think you have a little bit of a initiative to pull, pull the art world out of it. Sure. Well, the initiative you're talking about is called Sunflower Initiative, and it's a bold challenge I'm making, and we'll, you know, break that down in a moment. But to answer the first part of your question, COVID obviously has crippled all of life and all areas of everyone's lives, and business has suffered tremendously, obviously. Unfortunately, art seems to take a back seat in even a greater way. 
I mean, the museums have all been closed, and so nobody gets to see art physically in person. But art has been an industry that's been hurting for a very, very long time. I think most everywhere, no one's even speaking about art anymore. And original art, for some reason, I feel, has been stifled for nearly a decade anyway. So this has only exacerbated the situation, I think, even more. And tell us then, what is your challenge? My challenge is going to sound hyperbolic and it's going to sound bold, but it really isn't. As an artist, I'm asked for decades, what do you do? Why are you different as we started the interview here? You know, what is it about and what, you know, separates you? The thing that I've been trying to say now up front is sort of a challenge in general before I even sparked the idea for this initiative. And what I tell people is, I guarantee that if you take a really close look at what I do and you understand entirely that I don't use digital means or are retouching in any way, that you will see something you have never seen before. And again, it sounds hyperbolic, it sounds bold, it almost seems a bit arrogant, but I'm trying to be true to what it really is. And the initiative, it's called Sunflower Initiative, an artist challenge for one million US dollars in sponsorship. And what it's about is not me dictating or telling or teaching anything to anyone. It's more about a concept that I believe strongly in, which is not me, 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 look at me, look at me, listen to me, I'm the greatest. It has nothing to do with that. It's more about my truth in my life. What I follow is a lifelong pursuit to be an original artist, and in my case, I do it through natural, pure, organic photography on 8x10 film. The initiative part of the sponsorship goes for everyone. Everyone in life has a dream. Everyone in life, I strongly believe, needs to stay true to their own path. And that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to enlighten everyone. I'm not trying to do anything more than let you see that in my world, I am staying true to my beliefs and my foundation. And I'm trying to use that as an example and as a symbol. And I think people might understand through this message that I really do care about art for people. Yes, I want you to love my work. Yes, I want you to find something within all my categories that will really interest you. And I believe strongly I can do that through the strengths of my compositions, aside from the purity that I'm trying to follow as an artist. But the initiative and, and the sponsorship go hand in hand, and that's why I did it this way. So hopefully someone listening, and I'm writing to many business magnates, to many billionaires in the world, I'm hoping that I can arouse them, that I can let them see that I really am true to what I'm saying here. And if they really do study carefully everything I do and see my body of work, fortunately on my website I have 300 images that are outstanding in their uniqueness and in following, you know, the outline of what I'm speaking about here. Ultimately, when people, all viewers, understand, again, that I don't use computer manipulation, and they look at my work, it usually makes viewers do a double take. Because I'm trying to excite you and grab you through the composition. The composition speaks to you first. You cannot fake a first impression and you can't alter your own feeling about something you feel immediately. So, of course, that's going to be the very first thing that I'm hoping as an artist I'll be able to excite you through. Once that's done, the double take part is when you see that it isn't something that was done in Adobe. Again, usually most people see that and they can't believe it. I've done many interviews and I've been with many art world people 
who have said to me, it's kind of hard to believe, looking at your compositions, that what you're saying is actually the case because it seems impossible to do, which is, of course, the biggest compliment. And I hope, again, that I'll get people to sponsor me after they accept my challenge. My challenge is really saying that if what I say here is in fact truth, which it is, and you can see that for yourself, then I believe strongly a sponsorship and a donation to making my art worldwide, making the platform grow so that everyone can share in it is, you know, something that can really become, you know, a concrete, you know, idea that comes to fruition. So, Michael, tell me some of the people maybe that you have approached and their response. There's a, a, a group of successful people out there. You know, I think the world's billionaires have reached, I think, five, six hundred billionaires in the world. And I'm reaching, I'm starting at the very top. And I'm going after people like Elon Musk and Sir Richard Branson. And I mean all of them, Mark Cuban I'm approaching. I'm asking everyone that I can find on the list that is truly crucial and helpful to society in their own way. I mean, business magnates have in a big way controlled the world and the direction of people and have to care about the needs of the public and the world. And I believe most of them do and most of them have great foundations and really support people in a tremendous way. Many of them support art in a big way. And like Mayor, ex-Mayor Michael Bloomberg is a, you know, true art patron and cares about art. And I'm trying to reach pretty much all of them because I only need one or two or a handful to understand that this is really, really important. And particularly in these troubling times because of COVID, I think my art can serve as a as a symbol and a sample of people fighting to have a normalcy or to have, in my case, something to follow, something that can lift your spirits and, you know, give some kind of reassuring hope, some light at the end of the tunnel. Because I do believe that. I see people react to my work and most everyone is really inspired right off the bat. And, you know, starts asking questions about how I create the work and, you know, the conversation starts. So I'm doing that on one level. I'm also trying to reach out to many celebrities in Hollywood. I know many of them have their hands full and they're working on their own projects. And I know many of these people are approached night and day as are business magnates and, you know, even the big corporations who I have yet to try to make any progress through because I'm afraid that what I have to say might not be taken genuinely or seriously unless someone really looks into who I am and what I do. I've been doing this for 30, 40 years. I've helped many charities. I've done many projects that were for people. One many years ago was about shooting people worldwide from all cultures and all ethnicities to show a, you know, togetherness and you know, that people really are all the same everywhere and we all love our families and, you know, all have aspirations and dreams in exactly the same way. So, again, I'm trying to make it clear that I am completely genuine and that my work is original. And if I can get a, you know, yes to whomever is looking, where they see that for themselves, because that's the first thing I say, please see for yourself that I'm making a guarantee, you know, that my work's never been done before. So that's really who I'm reaching out to, which is, you know, a wide group of people. And, and what about some of the museums? How, how that's, what's, a, that's a great question. I mean, <laughs> is, is it, uh, how, how do you uh, have your work displayed? I have been writing letters to museums for many years now. I've done many broadcasts where I speak about, you know, drawfuls of letters that I've 
received from museums actually acknowledging me and responding in a favorable way. As I mentioned, Thomas P. Campbell, he responded and said that, you know, Modern and Contemporary Art Department in due course would contact me. And before COVID, Neil Benezra at the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco had his assistant call me acknowledging me and giving me hope that ultimately they will present my work. I unfortunately lately have heard that, you know, because of COVID, they're even more backlogged than ever. And their exhibitions are years out. And it's very disappointing because I obviously believe that my art can serve in a big way at the forefront. And I feel through photography particularly that there's been somewhat of a standstill with regard to really new art and fine art photography. And I'm hoping those, you know, walls will, will come down, that those barriers and those hurdles, you know, will be something I can overcome. And, you know, these curators will see is really imperative for the public and for people and for everyone to, you know, see and, and, and find new art that will really be exciting. Because my art, if nothing else, is extremely exciting and it's very progressive and it does stand out. So I think it should have its place at the museums and I'm hoping that will happen. And, and tell us, let's, let's talk a little bit about your technique. I can give a good explanation of an image that was very complicated. I had a glass butterfly. I backlit it in the studio and put it up against a black backdrop. I photographed the butterfly in 55 individual places. So it was 55 separate exposures and separate pictures I took of the butterfly, all on one piece of film, and again in different places. I then went to each individual position because I knew through a form of pin registration where they were, I would draw the butterfly on the ground glass. And I went to each position, moved the camera to create motion on the butterfly. So that involved another 55 exposures. And then ultimately, because I will never use a color filter or a color backdrop, and I don't paint on the film itself, and I don't use cross-processing and no digital enhancements, to get the blue on the film as the background, I panned in front of the camera lens a blue light wand. So now I had blue as a background behind the butterfly. The total amount of exposures was 111 individual exposures on one sheet of 8x10 chrome film. So, I mean, that's the best explanation I can give in an involved application of the technique that I use. And again, it is very individual and it's very related to very time consuming. Very time consuming. <laughs> I shoot movie film a lot. I haven't in the last several years because I'm still fine art photographer, fine artist first. But I have a film called Chasing Originality. I have another one called Film Magic Purity. And everything I just described for that one exposure would have to go into each frame of the film work I do. Typically with real-time playback, movie film gives you, it's usually 24 frames a second. So imagine I could never do the butterfly shot that way because it would be a month just doing that shot alone. But in my film, Chasing Originality, I comprised over 30,000 individual frames of film where I applied this technique to each frame, and that took over a year to do. So yes, it's extremely time consuming. The, the toughest part of all of it is if I make a mistake during one exposure, everything that I did for the final composition is, is ruined. And like, I really don't have a lot of room for error. So I try not to make mistakes. That, that reminds me of the old days in film. My uh, mentor in this business, uh, when they used to roll film, they used to uh, send it out 
And if they cut it, and they cut it in the wrong place, oh, yeah. that was it. It, 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 it was just ruined because uh, this was my mentor, Tony Spala. Hi, Tony. Anyways, he, when he would see what we could do in Adobe, and we could just move well, everything, yeah. we could move this around and move that around. Oh, yeah. and, and he was like, oh, yeah, we'd shoot it. We'd have to send it out. It would take a week to get it, get it there. Then, if, as, as I said, if it was cut wrong, it was just cut wrong. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, that that the was it, and and, and to, yeah, yeah, today to all the technology, and you know, I I know I use all this new technology of moving and cutting and, and sure. So well, it's funny because people ask me about the new technology, and I have to also say, I love the digital world. You know, I understand that digital technologies have made life convenient for everyone. My lifelong pursuit of organic purity through film departs from it, but I do understand it. And particularly with my work, for me to get my work on the internet, for me to have a website, I mean, I need digital technologies. I recently did a you know, conversation about you know, my digital scanner, which I'm in love with, because I can take my 8x10 Chrome and I can immediately you know, translate all that information and bring it into the digital domain. So again, I can present it and send it through emails and post it on my website or on Instagram or on Facebook. And the world, you know, can communicate in such a great way. So it certainly serves me as well. I had someone not long ago trying to get argumentative and combative with me saying, well, you use digital too. And I have to tell them, yeah, I certainly do, but I don't ever create anything ever through digital. I have a digital category on my website and there are about 15 images. You know, and I've shot like 20,000 8x10 chromes. You know, I mean, I, every so often will take out my digital camera and take a shot because it is something, you know, pretty easy and convenient. And it is a valid art form, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to knock digital photography. It's as pure a medium as is anything else. Painters paint on canvas. Obviously, as pure a medium is what I do as a photographer. Sculptors, any medium for art is, is special and essential. And, you know, to get a composition and something that matters is the first most important part of creating art for any artist. So digital photography in its own way is also outstanding because millions and millions of people are engaged in an art form that perhaps wouldn't be indulging in film and before digital photography maybe had no interest. So I do endorse it. It's just not something that I do and use as a way to create art for myself. And, and who are uh, people that you look up to, other artists that, that uh, you have looked up to in your career and, and inspired to be like? I was very, very ignorant to most all other artists before about 10 years ago. And I did it deliberately. I tried to stay away from influences, you know, and having a direction and copying anybody. And I am a true original, I have not copied anyone. When I overlap with someone, like I'll do Cubist Illusionism is a main category I do. Bobby Sheehan, who did a documentary on me, actually came up with that title. And I have followed and used that title since. And I do pieces, for instance, that may look a bit like something Picasso did. And I right away say this is a tribute to Picasso. I obviously don't own Cubism. Brock and Picasso did that, and many others, and they were great artists. And many of the traditional artists, from Monet to Chagall to Rembrandt, I mean, we could go on naming all of them, are profound. And modern artists like Mark Rothko, and obviously all of the great photographers that I mentioned earlier, the masters of photography that I particularly pay tribute to because they open the eyes to the world about photography being a true art form, as valid as anything else, as valid as sculpting or painting or the traditional art forms that people have loved forever. So, I mean, there's a great number of artists that have influenced me. I mean, Jeff Koons 
many people either love or hate, and I see he's a great artist. He's reached masses of people, and people sometimes fight me on that, and I say, no, I, I won't hear it any other way. I mean, Andy Warhol, people questioned him in the beginning and said, well, he's merging advertising and commercializing art. He's a great artist. I mean, people that, Mark Rothko, people say, oh, he smears colors of, of paint. Well, paint is beautiful and colors are beautiful. And his interpretation and his take on it was something profound. And anyone who can grab the attention of people through their art and become successful matters to me because I'm trying to do what they did. And I look up to every one of them. For some reason, their formula seems to work better than mine. I'm getting attention and I've gotten a good bit of attention in my life, but I want to reach new heights and hopefully get to where these guys are at. So there are just so many of them. And I take my hat off to everyone in the art world and every artist, when you're an artist, you put yourself out there for criticism. Everyone has an opinion about you. And in many cases, it's negative. And you have to face, you know, all kinds of, of bad feelings. Defensive? And it defensive. makes you defensive. And you can kind of hear in this interview that there's a built-in defensivity in me. And it's one of the things that I don't like. I don't want to be defensive. I don't want to have to sell anybody on what I do. And people knock Warhol a little and maybe Coons for that, but you know, an artist has to sell his work, has to try to get attention. So that part of it is is really, you know, not so great. But you know, I'm gonna continue to create art. I'm gonna continue to try to be original in everything I do. And I'm gonna put myself out there and you know, there's always gonna be people that have a different opinion. All of society is that now. You know, everyone has an opposing opinion and it's kind of hard to engage in conversations because you don't want to upset anybody. But we all do have feelings and we have to stay true to our feelings. The first part of the initiative that we discussed in this interview was about that. Stay true to some aspect of your life because it's all you have, whatever it may be. It's your belief, you have to follow it. And, you know, again, I'm hoping my art can be a symbol for that through the Sunflower Initiative sponsorship program or, or project that I'm working on right now. And the best way to contact you? My website, michaelcalavito.com, C-O-L-A-V-I-T-O. -O. And there, I mean, you see everything. My films are there, my art films, um, the documentary by Bobby Sheehan, other broadcasts. Michael, it has been a pleasure and we will check back and we'll see how this uh, Sunflower Initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.